mystery schools, they refer to this mystical time of coming out of the age of innocence as the Luciferian philosophy. I've tried to illuminate you with this for years on my radio broadcast. In the Bible, or in the church, they talk about the fall of man. Same thing. There's only one difference between the Luciferian philosophy and the fall of man is that those who talk about the fall of man believe in God, whether or not they believe in a Savior, they believe in God. The ones who believe in the Luciferian philosophy do not. Now here's how that works. In the Bible, we're told that Eve was tempted by Satan to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God had commanded Adam and Eve not to eat of the fruit of that tree. If you do, ye will surely die. Isn't that the commandment? Lucifer, through his agent Satan, on the other hand, told Eve, God lied to you. He's holding back the fact that you too can become God. But first you have to eat of the fruit of this tree. And if you do, you will surely not die, but shall become as gods. Isn't that true? So, from the religious aspect, we see that as the fall of man because man disobeyed God. We see that as the subjugation of the woman beneath man where she had originally been the partner, now she is subjugated beneath man because she was the agent of man's downfall. Is that correct? Now, I'm not talking right or wrong. I'm not trying to insult anybody in here. I'm just telling you what we're taught so that we all understand what we're talking about because that's most important. If you understand something differently than what I'm trying to impart to you up here, and we don't have the same definition, we're not going to understand each other, are we? Mysteries, on the other hand, look at this in a different light. Here's their story. It's a metaphor. They don't believe that there ever was a God, or that there ever is a God, aside from man himself. And man has not reached that state yet, but can, this is what they teach in the lodges, that if you perfect yourself as the temple of the God within, and become Christed, You've all heard this in the New Age movement. You too can become God. <clears throat> Here's the way they look at it. Here's their metaphor. For the end of innocence. Adam and Eve were held prisoner in the Garden of Eden by an unjust, cruel, and vindictive God. Until Lucifer, through his agent Satan, set man free from this garden by giving him the gift of intellect. Through the use of intellect, man will conquer the earth, will conquer nature, and will himself become God. It's taught in every Masonic temple in this land, every secret brotherhood, every secret society. Every mystical temple, every occult organization teaches the Luciferian philosophy. They do not believe in Lucifer. They do not believe in any entity called a devil, and they do not believe in God. It is a mistake for you to assume that they do. They are atheists in the strictest sense of the word. They are humanists. Something else that I wanted to add to what Bill Cooper is saying is that this this theology that they have, this belief that they have, uh, also leads them to believe to do evil and good, to embrace both, embrace the light and embrace darkness. And, and this is why... 
and how they do such horrendous things, right? Like they, uh, do I need to go through, you know, 9-11 and all this other stuff that they justify to themselves uh, by doing them because, again, it goes in their theology that, it, that they can do evil just as well as they can do good and you have to embrace them both. And this is where you can imagine the deep dark hole that they go down in their in their works, uh, what they actually do. Uh, I, I'm not going to get into details, but I'm sure you can use your imagination. So, again, that's a big problem with their theology. This is, you know, in the end, it's to us Bible believers and Christians, it's it's satanic. You cannot drink from the cup of uh, righteousness and the cup of darkness at the same time. Yes, as Christians, we stumble, we struggle, but we're fighting the good fight. We don't make up our minds to embrace both evil or darkness and light. There might be some darkness in our life, but we don't embrace it like they do. It's, it's a different mindset. And in the end, it's a different spirit. And if you look up the word spirit, it's it's even mind. Again, that is how they justify doing the horrendous things that have been done and are going to be done. And this is also why they reject Jesus Christ, because he claimed to be that one. He claimed to be God or the Son of God. And you have a body that was drained of blood and drained of water and dead for three days, yet resurrected from the dead with no blood, no water. And they can't do that with all their technology. I don't believe that they can run a body without blood and water. And so again, that's proof, also evidence that God exists. That's what Jesus was. He was he was evidence of God. He, he was testifying of his Father in heaven. And so if they admit that there is a God, and more specifically the God of the Bible, then they have to come to terms that they are going to be judged for what they are doing, have done, and will do. And they do not want that. Because you best believe that they know that the God of the Bible has standards and they are going against most, if not all, of the God of the Bible's standards. And in Romans chapter 1, it talks about this exact situation where they worship the creation rather than the creator, right? And so, you know, that's where this whole thing about you know, worshiping nature and the sun, the moon, and the stars, and even worshiping yourself because you are the creation, right? So that's where it stems from. And again, Romans chapter 1 says that they know inside, deep, deep, deep inside, and it says that they, they hide the truth in unrighteousness. They suppress it even in themselves, and it's all there in Romans chapter 1. But uh, original bad cat. Well, <laughs> you have to be bad to be good. Don't Is it you? true that you teach people how to make voodoo dolls and stick pins in them to uh, to hurt people? That's right. I believe that hate is necessary in a controlled way, just as much as love is necessary. I believe that hate is necessary in a controlled way, just as much as love is necessary. That's a clip of Anton Lavey, the founder of the Church of Satan, and I just wanted to show you that that is their theology. That love and hate are necessary and, you know, to the extremes. Uh, like I said, I always bring up like 9-11, right? And the reason, you know, they they look at people not, not so much because the people necessarily did anything to them, but they look down on people because of the, you know, the less lesser intellect. And they kind of look at people as sheep and just consumers sometimes. They, they look at people like they're expendable. Not all people, but, you know, like people they don't know. What do they care? They didn't know them. Or people they don't like. Or people that they hate. Expendable. That's that's how they look at, um, 
you know, other people, some other people. And the thing is, is that when you don't believe in God, you don't have these ultimate foundations, these 100% foundations of morality in you, then the sky is the limit. You can, you can believe anything you want to make up. And it's interesting to me because the generation that we're in, the last generation, uh, we see this going on in the public now, right, in the mainstream. Like we're hearing these things that are so bizarre that are not even scientific when you look at the biology of it. And, you know, just, just touching on it for a second, like straight obvious women, XY chromosomes, uh, saying that they're men, which is X, X chromosome and which is biologically false. Um, so, so where, where do the, where does the truth, where is the truth? Where are the ultimate foundations for your morality? And again, this is happening today, just in mainstream public even. And as, as you see here, the church of Satan and stuff like this, they use the same principles, the ultimate morality, uh, the foundations, the barriers, the, the, the bounds of their morality is whatever they can think up, whatever they want to make up, that's how they're going to operate. And ultimately, it's satanic. Thou shalt be as gods. Do what thou will, right? Then they don't have an ultimate foundation except the ones that they make up.